Thanks very much for the opportunity, Premier, Ev uh, CEDA, um, all of my parliamentary colleagues, b uh, business community. Uh, fantastic to be here today. Of course, I need 10 hours not 10 minutes, to do justice to this, uh, uh, this brilliant portfolio and the opportunities that exist in uh, West, regional Western Australia. Look, just uh, a couple of days ago, I was down in the southwest at this Procure Southwest Conference, and I saw a, there was a group of young uh, engineers and IT dudes, technicians from South 32's Worsley Alumina Refinery, and I got a glimpse of the future. They had there a a 3D printer costing less than $1,000, and from that they were printing components of a miniature vehicle, which when assembled they were using then to do um, mine um, and remote uh, mining inspections in a very safe and very effective way. And so it was a great demonstration of the potential to disrupt the prevailing mass production operating models, models that have led increasingly to the concentration of manufacturing and maintenance services away from the region. So this, this opportunity that is offered by digital technology and 3D printing really has huge potential for the development of small scale and bespoke in situ engineering that will change the dynamics of manufacturing. And I believe it is not beyond the realms of possibility that we could be producing a specialised WA-made vehicle. And indeed, there are a number of companies working on this, including one in regional Western Australia. And whilst there is a role for developing amenity in towns, it is my view, it is our government's view, that planter boxes of petunias are not the main game in creating regional jobs. There is a much harder task of driving new industries and expanding the range and reach of existing industries so that job, there are jobs in the regions that will attract people to live and stay in those communities. So in the next three weeks, we are bringing together uh, the advanced manufacturers of the Southwest, and there are a surprising number of them together to work out how government can drive the opportunities to expand advanced manuf that industrial base in the Southwest. And that's complementing the work that we're doing, bringing all of the innovation hubs and players from across regional Western Australia together to tell us how uh, we can supercharge regional startups and foster entrepreneurialism in the regions. And we do have to drive growth in the regions. Today, we released our Living in the Region survey. Um, this is a survey of over uh, 10,000 uh, people across regional Western Australia. And what it shows us is that there has been a decline in the confidence of regional communities in their prospects and their financial situation. And this um, it reflects the economic reality of our last few years and underlines why the McGowan government has a clear focus on jobs and the economy. Regional employment growth has been slow, averaging just 1.2% percent from uh, 12, between uh, 2012 to 2016. Current estimates in employment growth in regional Western Australia are just 1.7 per cent. That's between 2016 and 2020, compared with 8.4 per cent growth expected in greater, the Greater Perth region. So we really have to, um, we have to really drive very actively uh, this opportunity uh, for regional Western Australia. And I think the really interesting thing, despite all the negative comments, the concern about the standards of internet and mobile services and education and training opportunities, there's overwhelming positivity from these communities about their region and about their desire to stay there. 59% of young people want to stay in the region and 68 percent of the respondents said uh, that they loved the regional lifestyle. So this is a commitment, this is commitment, this passion is something that we must, uh, we must build upon. So we want to, we've looked at uh, manufacturing as one of the, you know, unsung stories, possibilities within the regions. Tech metals 
Uh, another fascinating uh, area, WA is emerging as a, leader, as a leader in the mining of these metals such as lithium, vanadium, uh, dysprosium and a whole heap of other completely unpronounceable elements in the periodic table. Now we all know the lithium story grow global battery market is growing on average of 15% per annum. South Korea, Japan, China, top three lithium ion batteries and new minerals, new minerals opportunities are unfolding. We know uh, Tanki's uh, lithium is expanding its uh, processing plant, Quinana, um, building on its ever-expanding mine down in green bushes. But we've also got, of course, in the Pilbara, uh, we have got Pilbara Minerals and uh, Althura Mining uh, have lithium mines under construction, and government is working actively with them to ensure that we get some real processing opportunities in the Pilbara. Likewise, we're working with uh, uh, lithium miners in the gold fields uh, to see how we can deliver uh, processing in that area. We've got Northern Minerals, who with its Aboriginal and Chinese partners are developing the world's first uh, dysprosium mine outside of China. Uh, and this has been developed uh, just uh, out of, uh, of Halls Creek. Now, this is an essential agreement in uh, ingredient in high-temperature, high-tech metals which are used in electric and hybrid vehicles. I mean, an amazing um, stream of opportunity in that. And we're working uh, there to drive processing, not just the mining of this incredibly precious metal. And, of course, in the gas going, we've got neodymium and uh, uh, praseodymium these unpronounceable ones. And uh, as I said, our focus is very much on ensuring that we do value add in this high tech area. Now, of course, agriculture, uh, that poor Cinderella of recent times, uh, but it's important to understand that this has continued um, to be our second major export earner. Agricultural production in this state is worth $8.2 billion um, uh, to the West Australian economy each year, and $7.6 billion of that is in exports, and it employs around 183,000 people. But we need a massive investment in R&D to protect and grow this industry. And I have to say, it's a pretty sad story what's happened uh, to uh, Department of Ag uh, over, over the uh, past few years. People, uh, a journalist the other day was telling me that he used to go out there in the uh, 70s and 80s. He had the agricultural round at the West, and the most exciting thing to do was to go out to the offices in South Perth, and they were alive with energy, and every day they were fine, making new developments, and there was this sense of charge. And I have to say, when I first went out there, it felt more like a morgue. Uh, you know, the, uh, the loss of critical capabilities and confidence in that agency was tragic. But there is still extraordinary science to be done. And we are working uh, very closely uh, with the universities and the private sector to rebuild that capability. Because if we are going to, if we are really going to drive this great employer within, the, um, within regional Western Australia, we've got to get that R&D right. We've got to deal uh, with the problems that are confronting, uh, confronting us with climate change, uh, lack of water, um, but at the same time um, ensure that we have got crops that are productive and nutritious. And we've got... And so our biggest challenge is not really finding the markets... Uh, we've got many, many creative people in the industry going out there and doing that. Uh, our, real, um, our real need is to ensure that we are helping the farmers on the other side of the farm gate. And no, but even on those products, there are, we really do want to add to the value add end. We reckon we can do a hell of a lot more. We've got amazing um, pioneers like the Franceschi fam family in Manjimup that are exploit exporting bizarre fruit cocktails uh, to Japan and aged care pulp packs to, uh, to China on, uh, on an incredible scale. We've currently got a program out. Now, if anyone is interested in finding new uses for potatoes... Um, We've got, a, we've got a little bit of a surfeit of potatoes, so we're encouraging people to come up with ideas for potato vodka and artisanal potato chips. We think that's going to work well. Um, 
it's you know we're going to have a hipster-led recovery of uh, of our reg of our potato industry. So um, now, of course, uh, our digital connectivity overwhelmingly industry has been telling us that uh, they, they want to get with the 21st century, they want to use all the ag tech that is out there, but quite simply um, with our, uh, the very poor connectivity uh, that we see here in, Western, in rural Western Australia, uh, they've got one hand tied behind their back. So we've currently got a $22 million agricultural telecommunications uh, fund, and we're doing a, a proper, for the first time ever, an audit, now friends in Telstra told me they're going to help us, um, an audit of all the telecommunications uh, uh, capability that we have in that state and then work out where the gaps are and how we can most effectively leverage off um, private, um, private sector funding uh, to really drive, improve that connectivity. And of course, I can never, would never, it'd be remiss of me not to mention our great push um, towards renewable energy. Uh, our region, the regions of Western Australia absolutely have some of the best renewable energy resources in the uh, in the world. So we've got a number of projects. Our Wave Energy Centre of Excellence down in Albany will see us continue to be world leaders in that area. The export, a crazy idea, but it's looking really interesting, the export of solar and wind energy via a high-voltage DC cable to Indonesia, known locally as the Kuta Cable from the Pilbara, um, is looking at a most interesting development of biomass in Kali and linking uh, solar with lithium processing in Kalgoorlie, just to name a few. So, uh, folks, there's huge amounts of really exciting things that we can do, and we're going to work our hardest to deliver those. Thanks very much.